forget all you know about podcasts. We welcome you to an experience uniquely different. Please join us for our coverage of all entertainment on the fringe of society. The candles are lit. The lights are down low. It is now time for our host. As he steps up to the pulpit, the sacrifice has been prepared for the midnight black. Ghastly greetings, groovy ghoulies, and how the hell are ya? Welcome to the newest edition of the Midnight Black Mass Podcast. We are live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. I am a little under the weather, but I am your host, the Reverend, the Monocle Minister of the Occult, Dan the Dragon Wilson. Uh, and I have a case, uh, you know, they call it, uh, you go to Comic-Con or Dragon-Con and get sick. They call it the con crud. Well, I have the sc <laughs> And joining me on this episode, of course, the return, who was out on a field assignment the last time we were here, but he's back. And I have no idea what he was up to, but he might tell us if we're lucky. Andrew Alexander, how's it going? Oh, I can't tell you what I was up to. A gentleman never kisses and tells. Well, <clears throat> since, since when were you a gentleman? Since always. <laughs> okay, I'll buy it. <laughs> and <laughs> our uh, third co-host here, the guest of honor over the weekend at the Scenic City Invitational. Uh, he also competed in his final professional wrestling match against former UFC star Matt Riddle in a hell of a fight. Uh, but he went down for the final count, and now he is officially a retiree, the Strong Style Psycho Tank. What's up, motherfuckers? Ready to do this <laughs> shit? Talk to Scenic City um, Invitational? Absolutely, I am, man. Uh, what a great night it was, uh, two nights, great weekend. Uh, really grown beyond leaps and bounds of anything I think the original plans had in store. Uh, had fans coming from all the way as, as far as Australia. I talked to fans from California, from Pennsylvania, from Michigan. Uh, met a lot of cool people. Uh, New York, I uh, met met people that I'd like talk to on the internet for years in the wrestling communities, you know, that I finally got to meet in person. Um, and then we had this great celebration for tank, uh, with his last match and then a big in ring presentation and capping it off with a fine roast, uh, which was really an, an epic time for all involved. Uh, Andrew Alexander, what do you think about the city city invitational? Man, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I got blown up just watching it. Uh, a lot of action going on. Uh, yeah, if you're a fan of uh, of that style of wrestling, that hard hitting, high impact, uh, non stop, independent style that's very, very, very popular right now, uh, you need to make it a point to come to the Scenic City next year or every year because it just keeps growing and growing. Uh, seeing a lot of talent that is clearly going to blow up in the next couple of years. Uh, Matt Riddle already kind of uh, a big sensation, but there are a lot of guys on that card that are going to be big independent names by the time Scenic City rolls around next year. So, yeah, it's it's worth checking out. You gotta you gotta check it out. I don't know if it's worth coming from Australia to see, but it's pretty damn good. Well, so, Tank, it, it was uh, in many ways. All about you. I know you're like, I didn't want it to be all about me. But, you know, I mean, we, you're so beloved that uh, you pretty well took center stage, even presenting the trophy to the winner of the tournament, Matt Riddle. Um, for Just like for you, not, not the wrestling itself, because we'll get to that in a minute. But like for you and the whole experience, like kind of take us on that journey a little bit and just kind of give us your, your thoughts now that the dust is settled and uh, what it's what you're feeling like now that it's all over? Like, has it finally hit you? 
Yeah, it's uh, not as not as bad as I thought it would have. I uh, I guess I got most of my tears out before the shows, and just didn't want to act like a blubbering fucking idiot and crying and shit in front of everybody because that's normally what I do. But I held my composure, brother. I held my composure. But it was a busy week. You know, I did an interview for the newspaper. I did like seven different podcasts. Uh, you know, I, I was telling my wife yesterday, I was like, they like me. They really like me. You know, I was just thought it was just kind of a, I didn't, I didn't really want it to be that big of a deal, but it turned out to be a big deal. And I appreciate everybody that, that, that sent their love and came and talked to me and bought a shirt. Cause I sold a buttload of fucking shirts. It was pretty cool. I saw in a picture from a, the Southern Underground Pro Show from last night and saw like 14 tank shirts in, in the crowd. And I was like, man, that's about it. You know, so even though I'm I'm done and gone, there are people still going to be uh, supporting and showing off the, the colors, if you know what I mean. But as far as the match itself, uh, that was one question I got asked most was, why Matt Riddle? And the reason why I chose him was, He's the top dog on the Indies right now, and I just—it was something I had to prove to myself to see if I could still hang with one of these uh, indie indie darling type of guys and win or lose. It was going to be it, and of course I lost. But I think I hung in there with him pretty good. He uh, he knew he was in a fucking fight. And well, for a guy guy from the UFC, that's not too damn bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as but as far as the rest of the matches, uh, on night one I only got to sit and watch a couple, but on night two I pretty much watched the entire show, just sitting in the back and watching it. That Gunnar Miller Matt Riddle match was uh, fuck man, it reminded me of the Lesnar Goldberg match for Mania this year. That five minute just nonstop beating the shit out of each other. It was good stuff. And uh, and then the finals with uh, Kurt Stallion, Joey Lynch, Anthony Henry, and Riddle. You know, we got four of the best going out there. And I'd, I'd said this uh, a few months ago on a podcast I did for Hot Spots. Uh, Kurt Stallion will be your next Matt Riddle, in my opinion. Just, man, this kid, he lives, I believe he lives in St. Louis now. He's from Texas, and he drives like, 3,000 miles a week to go to fucking shows. And that just takes a lot of heart and dedication right there. I don't care what you say. Uh, I don't know why I don't know why promoters aren't flying him in. He fucking deserves it. But he's going to be your next breakout guy, I believe. Joey Lynch, another guy he could break out at any time. Henry's already broken out. You know, he's doing his deal. Uh... Uh, the Darby Allen kid, Joey Danella, they had a little fun match with all their crazy shit they did on Friday night, which I did sit and watch that one because I knew that was going to be a barn burner. And it was very, very entertaining. But the weekend as a whole, man, I, I enjoyed it. It was probably the best weekend of wrestling that I've ever been a part of. And not just because a uh, big focus of it was on me. It was just the show itself. I believe it's been the best SCI yet as the three years of it. Yeah, I think so. That that was my opinion. Like uh, as far as especially as far as like the overall, like I think you could argue maybe there was a match on one or the other that might have been better. I, I don't think there was necessarily, but they, there was some really good stuff on all of them. Uh, but you could argue certainly. I mean, I could try to go find some matches and even argue against myself. But if you, you know, it would have been fresh in your brain. I just think as far as variety, this year's really, was really over the top in a good way in, in that respect. Like this year you had the, the most varied field of talent we've ever had as far as guys just doing all something different. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, and then they uh, announced today the date for the, Scenic City Trios Tournament, a six-man tag tournament in November at Hickson High School with the first match announced, Gunnar Miller versus Cyrus the Destroyer, and that'll 
I'm, it's already got the the Twitter buzz about people coming coming in for that. So the promoters and the guys who are behind Cynic City Wrestling are doing something good for our city and our location, and uh, good thing for the schools. You know, they're like fundraisers, making money for the schools and putting a little bit of money in the boys' pockets. Yeah, you don't uh, you don't want to sell yourself short on that little deal with Matt Riddle because y'all's match was uh, y'all's match was badass too. It was had that Lesnar Goldberg feel where I mean you hit your finish in about seventeen seconds, and I'm telling you, man, people thought, <coughs> wow, they must uh, <laughs> they must have uh, shorted Riddle's pay because this match is going about thirty seconds because <laughs> they really thought that uh, the match was over. Uh, so yeah, that match was awesome too. I think the two best matches of the weekend were yours and Riddle's and uh, Gunner Miller and Riddle. It's going to be interesting to see if we ever get to see that again because those guys, uh, those guys went at it hard. And I think for the trios tournament, we need to enter the Devil's Rejects team. It'll be me, Tank, and Dominus, and we're going all the way to the final. <laughs> damn right. It'll be the fake tank from Indiana. Y'all can bring that some bitch in. <coughs> Either piece of shit. But I, I appreciate you saying that. But you thought, you know, my match of Riddle was was, was really good. I mean, it it felt good. I it had a lot of good feedback. But you know, y'all know me. I'm the most critical motherfucker on myself. And I think every match I have is fucking terrible. So. <laughs> well, well, most I appreciate of them are, that. In all fairness. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, it could be the argument could be made for either one. Uh, I know everyone was really uh, excited for Gunner and Riddle, but I mean, your match with Riddle was every bit as good as Gunner's. Uh, they had similar feel, uh, but I think they, I think both those matches stole the weekend for sure, especially for the type of type of wrestling that I like and lean towards. I really like both of those. Yeah, you know, I was throwing, you know, I was slowing the pace down a bit, and you know he's beating my ass on the outside, and I poked his eyes. You know, just doing some old school Southern Hill shit. You know, I was like, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna knock me the fuck out if I don't fucking poke his eyes or something. Well, that shit hard got over, man. A, that crowd popped when you did that, and then when he threw that big head kick and you caught his foot and started just biting his toes, I mean, that was one of the biggest <laughs> pops of the night. Oh yeah. I thought that got over pretty well. Yeah, that was pretty epic. <laughs> Hold on, guys. Pretty. I will be right back. Okay. Shit, I'll be back. We got it covered. So, Andrew, you missed the roast. Uh, it was quite unfortunate because it was quite a legendary time. Yeah, that would have... Uh... When that first got brought up, I kind of threw it under the rug, like, yeah, that's, yeah, that's really going to happen. Because you know how it is with wrestling. People say a lot of things are going to happen, they don't. But, yeah, it right. actually come through, man. But I just, uh, like, you, like you said, you know, earlier, before we went on the air about being exhausted, I'm just, uh, I was exhausted as well. Got a lot of irons in the fires right now. And uh, it's my understanding that the rose started pretty late. I just had to pass on that, and I didn't want to. I didn't end up getting emotional. I know you're supposed to poke fun at everybody, but I was trying to get out of uh, this weekend without breaking down. Because it's all, you know, it was a good weekend and fun for everybody, but it was sad, man. It was sad uh, seeing our buddy hang him up, you know, once and for all. For all. It's a really big deal, especially because you look at the, uh, I don't know some of the core group from the area of the country we live in, they're kind of, we, he was kind of the last one that was still going, to be honest. I mean, I mean, you're, you obviously still have a strong presence, but as far as in ring, all of our little quote unquote click is, uh, it's kind of all done now, right? No, they are. I mean, I, I'm the last one in the business. <laughs> Well, I guess AIDS yeah. is still in the business a few times a year, but yeah, it's just different. And of course, it branches out. You know, there's still yeah, obviously we have a lot of friends, a lot of buddies. I mean, Kyle Matthews, uh, 
of course, Jeff G. Bailey is, is still going strong in his role and been just younger guys that we've come across and helped and mentored and things such as that, obviously still going strong. But this little this little group that started from this little area and obviously Tank was first and then you and some other guys were just a, a, a cunt hair before me. But then uh, you say, it's just kind of, kind you of over. cunt hair. After... <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge chapter of life. It's just kind of closed, you know. So it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, man, huge deal. It's like you know, life is always changing, and it's one of those things that's hard to, to accept sometimes because you just want shit to stay the same forever. But um, you don't, and that's what makes the shit important and special. I guess because it don't last forever, you know. Uh, you got to appreciate it while it's there. And I think we did a good job of that, but you always, when when it's over, you do reflect on like, man, you know, we should have done this and we should have done that. Uh, but, uh, you know, no, no regrets. I, I'm very happy with where I'm at, uh, both in life and in the business, and happy to see, uh, you know, Tank coming out of it where he did. But I, I really hate that you missed the roast because there were some fucking hilarious Hilarious moments. Oh yeah, the roast was <laughs> fucking great, man. I really felt sorry for Scott Hensley's wife for all the goddamn and motherfuckers I started dropping because you know she she's not really used to being around that kind of language. But uh, oh I, shit, that. I didn't even see Bertha May in there. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. She was she was in there, and I was just fucking. You know, everybody was ripping each other apart. I'm not. I wasn't prepared for that, so I just told some funny stories about Kim and Tempers and Rockwell and our trips. And I was going to tell the one about Kim blowing ass at that fucking huddle house, but I figured she would have got up and fucking hit me with one of them goddamn chairs, but I didn't do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, it was – they, they – and then Rick Michaels with the fucking line of the night, and he saved that for the very end, and I popped bigger than shit for that. I'm not going to repeat it. But goddamn, that had everybody fucking going. Well, I want to hear that shit. What do you say? <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you off the air. <laughs> yeah. Oh, DeRose no. was a top secret moment. So you know those those moments. There was no no recording devices allowed. Uh, Larry Goodman was there, and we uh, held a gun to his head and a knife in his asshole, and said if he wrote a report, he'd die. Uh, no, he he just didn't do it out of respect. I kid. We love you, Larry. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I really think man, they should there. have announced. No, if I, I would have been there, I'd have told that story about Kim farting in the huddle house real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest, think... most disgusting, grossest shit I've ever experienced in my life. <laughs> but I think uh, I think Gets, you know, he he was a mastermind behind it. I think he should have told every fucking body. We should have packed the whole goddamn room. I mean, it was already pretty packed. We could have got another 30, 40 more people in there, and they'd have been in for a fucking, the goddamn ride of their fucking life for some of the bullshit we were spewing. Oh, yeah. Well, it was originally just going to be for the boys. It was originally just going to be for yeah. the boys, and then, like, because of all the shit happened after the show, it was like not nothing major, but just some annoyances. And um, so it ended up delaying everybody getting out of the building. And so because of that, like, a lot of the boys were already, like, fucking done for, you know, <laughs> or gone to off to, to their party or whatever they were doing. But we still ended up getting a good bit of them. Like, Lynch Mob was there, Team IOU, uh, a lot of the guys that just came up for the show, like Matt Hankins yeah. and Nina Monet and Brian Blaze. And, uh, fucking, uh, Kurt Stallion came up there, was eating his goddamn salad, his old skinny <laughs> ass. I tell you what, man, this dude, I don't know if you got to sit around and bullshit with him. He's a funny motherfucker. I didn't get to talk to him very much. We we just exchanged pleasantries, and I I sat out by the pool with him for a minute when I was working on another deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, that's that another kid. Uh, before he blows up and wants too much money, get his ass at anarchy. Because you know he'll make that fucking drive, so he don't right. give a shit. Yeah, I thought he was awesome. I like his little, you know, Texas gimmick and his music and everything, his look. And he was a cool dude. Yeah, there was a bunch of, a bunch of cool stuff going on. Alexander presented me with a 
uh, tank action figure. Like, he had me a figure made about eight, nine years ago. It was badass. And it was, like, young tank. And then this, this fucking figure is, like, goddamn old man tank with a goddamn gray <laughs> beard. And I popped, I popped bigger than shit for it. So I was like, oh, my God, this is, like, the best shit ever. Like, old man Logan, you got old man tank. <laughs> He yeah, hasn't got, used I, I, I his didn't. fork in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't. I actually didn't make it. I got it made, but I was really impressed with it made. You know, oh, it was on the, the beard, and uh, yeah, it had the little gray specks, and it was his gold and black uh, fighting britches and everything. And yeah, I was really happy with how it turned out. I think it looked pretty good. And just wanted to do a little. Then, something. Uh, of course, the uh, the original artwork that. Uh, was done was I thought amazing like I was very jealous of that because that's like some badass shit to have hanging in your house yeah man if you go to my Facebook there's a picture of uh, the baby it's just sitting against the wall and she's just standing there staring at it and it's like the best picture ever and there's another picture of her kissing daddy on the picture so it's it's good stuff too Uh, I was in the middle of a fantasy football draft my wife sends me this picture you know how I am about my kids. I get all choked up. We're all sitting here doing fantasy football, and I got fucking tears rolling down my goddamn face. They're like, "What? what's wrong, man? I go, well, my, that pick sucked. <laughs> so I'm trying to fucking play it off. This shit, though, I, I, I really, yeah, that fucking portrait was awesome. I was waiting for somebody to bust it over my goddamn head. I'd have got some hellacious color, but they, they wouldn't let me do it. One last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny when they were talking about like what what we're gonna get you, and they're like, uh, "Oh, get him a watch because you know he's like that's what you get people when they retire." And I'm like, "I mean, I guess." And then somebody was like, "Kim said Tank hates fucking watches." <laughs> they're like, "Okay, yeah, no. yeah." <laughs> yeah, I said, uh, I'm pretty sure I've never seen that motherfucker wearing a watch. Plus, I mean, nobody wears a watch now because you got your cell phone. I mean, I get the symbolism. No. I have a Rolex, and that somebody don't even work. I just wear it as a fashion piece. <laughs> <laughs> well, about a month and a half ago, Kim asked me, because our anniversary's coming up. She's like, would you she goes, Would you like a watch for, for, your, you know, for an anniversary present? I looked at her and said, well, fuck no, I ain't going to wear that goddamn thing. So I guess she got back with Massey and was like, nah, the watch ain't, ain't going to fucking work. Yeah, there was quite a few surprises. Uh, Clint Stevens made me a new pair of fighting britches that I got to wear one time. They were awesome. He made a little bitty pair of fighting britches for my daughter, my baby girl. And that was another boo-hoo moment for me. Like I guess anything to do with my kids and family, it it fucks me up. <laughs> and uh, and I know the other night, you know, when I took the boots off and I looked over at Dragon and the goddamn, he had a tear running down his face. And I was like, motherfucker, don't do that shit. I'm holding my <laughs> I had to put my fucking head on the mat when you <laughs> took your fucking boots off. I was like, nope. <laughs> 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 that, I was fine until then. That's what it got me. And then, you know, and then having guys just, just show up for the last match. Uh, Chris Gans was there, Terry Lawler, one of my mentors, Bobby Hayes, he showed up. And, you know, and then all all of you guys being there and then my family being there. My dad was there, but he, his old ass wasn't getting in the ring. He's like, nope, I ain't doing it. I'm no Mark, <laughs> is what he told me. Nah, he didn't say that, but he was just like, nah, I'll pass it. It was it was it was a cool ass weekend, man. It was it was it was it was good stuff. Glad glad to be a part of it. And and if City City keeps going the way they're going, I mean they're going to be, I already consider it a premier tournament for professional wrestling, and it's just going to get better and bigger. Yeah, I I think so. I'm just like the the whole like making it an event where like the fans get to come and, and, you know, interact with each other and everything. Like, that's really, like, I mean, can't understate the value of what the Hales clan added to the thing by really making it a community thing. Oh, man, you, those guys, they work their asses off as much as the damn boys do, you know. It's putting that, uh, Papa Hales especially, putting up, putting all that together. 
and then Dylan. I mean, they're like the kings of social media. If you're good, they will tweet you out, and people will know who the fuck you are. That's just what they do. And, yeah, uh, great folks, great allies to have, and uh, great partners oh, yeah. in, in do, doing this whole deal. So, I was now that it's that, over, I, go ahead. Yeah. No, man, what are you going to say? No, no, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm segwaying into something else, so say what you're going to say. No, no, I was just going to say, uh, I hate to cut this short, but I got to do some personal things right quick. So I'm going to have to bail on you guys, so y'all just keep the show rolling, and I'll give it a listen later on, but... I do love both of y'all like 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 fucking like my brothers. You know, y'all y'all are my brothers. Y'all are family. And even though I'm out of the business, like I was telling guys the other night, I'm retired. I'm not fucking dead. So I'll I'll still be around. You know, if there's shit birds need to be taken care of, I'll take care of them. Some bitches. <laughs> you better. <laughs> we love you too, man. It's exactly the same. You're family and always will be. And. uh We'll get together and watch SummerSlam or some other shit soon. Not oh, shit. You ain't lying, man. We're, it's just, it's just going to be like anything, like anything else, man. We'll still hang out and shoot the shit, make fun of people. Just won't be doing it in a, in a locker room. We'll do it in the, in the fucking living room instead. But That's before right. Before I go, I just want to say thank y'all. I love y'all. Fast Eddie, I love you too, man. Love you too, it was, I, I was a, It was a pleasure for you to it, – it, it meant a lot for me. You couldn't make it to the match, but you were there Saturday, so that that was cool as shit. It was my I honor. I really do appreciate that. Tank, it was my honor. My privilege. And uh, like I said, I just got some shit I got to do right quick, so I don't want to hold y'all up. I'm going to get off here, and I, and I guess we'll be back next week. I'll be ready to go next week. Yes, we will. All right, thanks, Sounds guys. good. All right, have a good night, brother. See you, Bob. You know, that seems kind of odd that um, he's usually very open about it, but this time when he had to go take a massive shit, he just tried to, you know, shook, butter it up and say he had to do personal stuff. That's weird. As long as he don't text me a picture of it, I'm happy. He hasn't done that in a while, <laughs> but, yeah, I wish uh, I know. somebody could have partaken that. He used to take the nastiest shit you've ever seen in your life and just text out a big group picture of it. And that shit was so fucking gross. He looked, look, that's got a dorsal fan. <laughs> <laughs> he, he would say, look, this one looks like, and he would just insert some random thing. And sadly, he would be right. Be like, yeah, that does look like that, but you didn't have to show me. You could have just described it. But, yeah, he hasn't done that in a while. I've been lucky. <laughs> Oh, I love it, motherfucker. I'm I'm glad I'm so tickled that it went off well for him and uh you know, we had such a legendary time, like for the roast, you know, White Trash came down, uh, you know, his former tag team partner, he was part of the roast. Um, Mr. Delicious J C North was the M C. Um and we tried to get Laz in because we we had this whole big plan where we were like we were gonna get him a stripper. We were gonna tell him we got him a stripper. And they're going to play that Britney Spears and fucking Laz is going to come in and give him a lap dance, but it didn't work out. That would have been funny as fuck. Man, whatever happened to that guy? Where's he at? He's back. He's, uh, I mean, he retired for years, but um, he's an artist now. Uh, and, I mean, I think he has like a real job too, but he's, you know, he's like, does some pretty cool looking painting and shit. Um, but uh, he's, uh, he's, um, seems to be possibly training for something in the ring and I don't know what in the world that could be but in a totally unrelated note I promise on September the 9th we will be having an NWA Wild Side reunion show at the Landmark Arena in Cornelia, Georgia just release ticket information it'll go on sale this weekend starts at noon with an all day Q&A and Fan Fest tickets to the event are $25 ticket to the Fan Fest are t- or uh, 10 or I know I'm sorry they're 12 by themselves but you can get the package for 35 and, that uh, shit's going to for, Yeah, and the building is going to sell out. We already got people making reservations at hotels from all over the fucking free world. So, um, over well, 60 confirmed that, Wild Side stars. That um, Wild Side was, uh, man, people, I don't know, man, people may forget about that or uh, 
current wrestling fans, but that shit was a big deal back in the day, man. I used to, I mean, right before I got in the business, and then right after I did, I would watch that, and I would just, I was just blown away. I'm like, what is this? And you know, and then I quickly, I get in, and I meet, you know, I meet you, I meet Jimmy Rave, and and you know, soon after Tanks up there, and I'm just, I'm kind of blown away. And it was, it was a huge deal, a huge deal. I mean, some of the guys that they produce. Obviously, the big one being AJ Styles, and that's a pretty uh, that's a pretty big name. Arguably, the single best wrestler in the business today. You know, homegrown talent, and wild side. So that's a huge deal, and that's that's going to be a big show. Like it just keeps getting bigger too, and I don't even hardly know half of like the surprises and stuff. I asked them to keep me in the dark intentionally. I've uh, had a couple match suggestions and some some help there. Bill Barons is really leading the the charge with with Rick and some other people of like really trying to put together something that's a tribute to like all eras of wild side. But yeah, you get the package tickets, VIP package is $35 that gets you the fan fest and the show. And it is going to sell out. There's no question about it. So you, when the tickets go on sale, um, they'll go on sale live at the events at NCW and Anarchy this Friday and Saturday, August 11th and 12th. And then we will release online sales on Sunday, the 13th. And so, and um, there's going to be limited, probably less than 400 tickets will be sold. And But we are, for those of you who do get turned away, for a nominal fee, uh, certainly not the full ticket price. Uh, we'll cut you a deal. Not sure what the price is going to be on that yet, but we have a closed circuit showing of it set up at the bar next door. <laughs> Are you serious? Wait, there's a bar next door now? Yeah, it's been there for years. It's that little building in front of the building. Um, it used to be Bulldog Billiards, and they moved out of there. And so we have access to it, and we are rigging it to simulcast the show right from our mixing board. That That is awesome, bringing back closed circuit. Man, I'm, I might buy me a couple tickets to this and scalp them all. <laughs> And the scalping might be hot on this one, man. It's like I said, I we're we're pretty floored by the reaction. It it is going to sell out. So get your tickets if you want them ASAP. I'll be outside the building and somebody'll be like, Hey Dan, is Andrew Alexander in the parking lot scalping tickets? And you'd be like, Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh it's gonna be legendary, man. So what else is going on in the wrestling world, man? Our uh, our uh, our buddy Dash Wilder can't get a break, man. Is uh, he just got back from that broken jaw, and now his partner suffered. A, I think it's a bicep injury. Going to be out a couple months. Like, yeah, that's that's the saddest that. shit. I hate that. That's a bummer, man. Because that revival, you know, they were building that program with the Hardys. You could tell, obviously, and uh, that they're not going to get to do that. Sucks. And another thing that sucks is, and, you know, hopefully, given the recent wave of injuries that they've dealt with, like, I think maybe it's not as big of a stigma anymore. But used to be guys get hurt like that, they would fucking lose faith in them. Don't seem to be the case no more. They didn't lose faith in Balor or Rollins or any of them guys. So I think they're good as far as their spot, but it certainly delays their ability to really get out there and get that big program. It's going to make them big money. Yeah, I mean, working with the Hardys is a big deal, and they can always come back to it, um, but it definitely sucks, and it's a huge bummer. Uh, I don't think you can hold stuff like that against the boys, especially nowadays because they grind them so damn hard. Uh, The style that is just demanded nowadays you can't not get injured. I mean, that's going to happen to everybody, you know, and, and this happened at a live event. It wasn't a pay-per-view or a TV, so you know these guys are busting their ass at these house shows. Um, so, yeah, that really sucks. Also, uh, I think Bailey has suffered a shoulder injury, and it seems to be pretty legit. It's going to take her out of SummerSlam. She had a big match. Um, so, yeah, you know, that stuff sucks from a, from a creative standpoint, especially with the WWE. They're – constantly under that microscope and people just just ready to pounce on you know this is a bad idea and why did they do this and why did they do that but you can you can bash as well as i can 
booking a small independent show when you have guys go out with injury or guys go out for other reasons, it, it's terrible. So when For injuries and much more stupid reasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, those are even worse. But when you're the largest company in the world and you have that happen and you have to adjust things on the fly, I mean, it's really hard. People just don't understand how difficult that can be. So, you know, uh, it, it sucks that it happened, especially right now going into their second biggest event of the year. But, I mean, I'll, obviously the Revival – in my opinion, the best tag team in the business today. There's there's kind of not even a close second to me, really. I mean, there's some good teams out there, but they're in another league. And then, uh, of course, Bailey, she's she may be the best female wrestler right now. So they're they're going to be fine. They're going to bounce back. But it is uh, it is disappointing. Yeah, for sure. And. Uh... The uh, the big I, I know you you probably aren't it's not much your bag but it had a tie to something we did uh, you know of course uh, one of Tank's last matches was against the bulldozer Matt Tremont in Cornelia and um, they had a huge great you know bloody brawl it's, uh, Tremont really the premier guy of that style right now uh, but he wrestled Onita the Deathmatch Legend in CZW this Saturday. Um, and so uh, I watched most of that show and found it quite enjoyable. Um, the, I, like, a lot of people were pissed about, like, oh, because it turned into a six-man. Like, I mean, I, you know, dealing with the Japan offices sometimes is difficult. Like, and Onita's limited. Like, it didn't seem like the people really were that mad about it. It's even for, it's still, like, people are pretty excited just to see Onita. Yeah, that's a that's a big match. I mean, and that's a that's a good rub for Tank, even though he doesn't necessarily need it anymore. But people looking up, oh, who is this guy? What's he done recently? Oh, he wrestled this guy Tank. Let's watch that match, you know. So that's always yeah, for uh, sure. Always good to get that rub. Yeah, <laughs> I love that uh, FMW stuff from the the nineties, man. Like that was uh, Onita was the man. Like I, I really, really loved that as well. It was, uh, it was like the Japanese ECW was a little more crazy. Yeah, I used, I got some of those tapes back in the day, uh, those VHS tapes. A lot of our listeners have no clue what that is, but just yeah. picture something you'd watch videos on that you could hit someone with and give them a concussion, and that's what a VHS yeah. was. Once upon a time, yeah. you could not click on YouTube and find any wrestling you wanted. You actually had to go trade tapes. <laughs> I know, man. Can you imagine being a teenager in today's world with YouTube and the WWE Network and all of these services? Man, I would never see the light of day, and I damn sure would have never gotten any pussy because I would have been stuck in my room watching wrestling all damn day. Yeah. I, mean, I, I kind of feel the I same. I got out and got any when I was in, in high school because I was so obsessed, you know, getting the VHS tapes and any way you could and recording stuff and watching it and everything. And now it's just you can see basically any match that's ever happened if you tried hard enough. Yeah, now it's like what's not out there is the the chase. Like, you know, what is the rare shit? Like, I saw somebody the other day posted a fucking clip that had, like, a triple shot of rare talent. And I think you liked or commented on it, so you may have seen it. Um, it was, like, Jackie Fargo teaming with Roughhouse Fargo, who there's hardly no footage of, against Chris Cold and somebody else, who there's also no hardly no footage of. He's one of those, like, allegedly great, amazing, ahead-of-his-time workers uh, and personalities that uh, is just lost to the ages. And then also, it was from fucking Chattanooga, and there's hardly any Chattanooga footage out there. So it was like a triple threat of rare shit. (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of amazing to me that still some of this random stuff pops up from time to time. It's like, man, who was sitting on this for all this time and not putting it on YouTube or whatever? But yeah, there's still occasionally new stuff will pop up and... Like, holy shit, where has this been all this time? 
And so, yes, yeah, so it's a, it's. It's curious to see what else is still out there that we haven't seen, you know. I mean, people obviously, Bill Watts and Jerry Lawler have stashes, and who knows what the WWE owns that they haven't put out there yet, you know, Stampede and different stuff like that. I was uh, talking to David Bixon's fan at uh, SCI, who's, uh, you know, big wrestling fan who went on to be a pretty big journalist and actually covered the uh, the Hulk Hogan Gawker trial, and he was telling me about some some shit like that. You know, some rare shit that was out there that um, like or, and some unique deals. Or like, uh, there's ECW shit that Rob Feinstein owns that WWE didn't get because of the deal he made with Heyman and them. That like there's some some deal that was made that allows him to basically keep the rights to all of the house show and fan cam footage in perpetuity. Yeah, did you ever watch any of that fan cam stuff back in the day? I tried. I I, I couldn't really. Watch I it. had every fucking one of them, man. I was obsessed with ECW when I was like sixteen, seventeen. I was like I was saving up to buy the next fucking tape, whatever it was. And then oh, yeah. by the time. Anyway, I'm- because, you know, you'd go to those ECW house shows and our video would be set up and they'd have the tapes. And I would just, that's all I would buy. I would buy just a, a, as many tapes as I could get. But uh, occasionally I would get, oh, you know, the show from Dalton on a fan cam. I'll buy it. And, you know, I'd buy it and watch it. And I'd be like, this is terrible. I can't watch this. And, you know, it's so kind of jumpy and the, the audio just not not done very well i mean it's definitely cool to see if you if there's particular stuff out there that you want to get and take a look at but i just remember it giving me a headache trying to watch yeah it was a little hard to watch a little fuzzy a little little shaky (laughs) there's some good stuff on there for sure Yeah, we should. Uh, I don't know. We should do a. We should do a show one night with the three of us talking about. And, you know, it all be kind of similar. I mean, Tank got a little head start on us and a bunch of stuff, but just what it was like growing up as a wrestling fan and stories we have from going to shows and just different stuff like that. Oh yeah, for sure. I could could tell a lot. I mean, oh, I I got into well, business pretty young, so I didn't like go to a bunch of shows as a fan as a teenager as much. I mean, I did in my short period of time, but it was only from like 15 to 18 as a teenager where I was like actively going to shows all the time. It wasn't really a very long time. Yeah, because I'm a, you know, I'm a fan still, but I'm one one hundredth of a fan as much as I was when I was a teenager. And when I was growing up, I mean, I was absolutely obsessed. Oh, same here. Yeah, to an unhealthy, was, uh, unhealthy degree. Oh, for sure, dude. It was twenty four seven wrestling. What about you, Fast what Eddie? You? Did you? Uh, what did you grow up on? Did you, were you obsessed? Like oh, the rest Lord. of us? Everything from Chattanooga with Harry Thornton or Nashville, depending on exactly where it was coming from on WBMG CBS 42 to old World Wrestling Federation footage on WWOR Channel 9 out of New York. Also, of course, Georgia Championship Wrestling with Gordon Soley. Um, you know, it's it's and of course you had ESPN picking up uh, Global uh, Global Wrestling Federation a little bit later, as well as World Class out of Texas. There were we we actually had it blessed. I mean, uh, there was a point when I moved to Atlanta in 1989, and I managed to catch that six-hour block on WVUE Channel 69 Saturday nights. Oh boy! But I think my favorite still, for as much as I appreciated the Backland era of WWF, Tony Gurria, Rick Martel, tag team champions, the Samoans, the Moon Dogs, Pedro Morales, Don Morocco. Um, being able to catch people like Wrestling 2, the mass superstar, Tommy Rich, uh, the Freebirds in their infancy, as well as w- two of my favorites of all time in Southeastern. I forgot I forgot to mention Southeastern Championship Wrestling. Uh, Fuller Golden Welch promotion, of course, with my two, like I said, my all-time favorite during that era, Dutch Mantel, who was down here in the Southeast U.S. 
And out of the Chattanooga, Tennessee market, Gypsy Joe. Genuinely one of my favorites of all time. When he and Tojo Yamamoto used to team up, dude, that was gold. That was as good. Um, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this one. Um, watching those two go in a tag team match was as much fun as watching an old school NASCAR banging race. Back in the days when they could actually bump each other. And you watch Joe and um, Gypsy go, I mean, Tojo and Gypsy go at it in a tag team or even in singles matches. It's just a wrestling fan's dream. And kids these days don't know what it was like to have real pro wrestling. They're used to having television stars and movie stars. We had rock stars. We had wrestling. Big difference. Yeah. I, I Like, my yeah. favorite stuff as a kid was... Um, it was pretty varied. Like, I didn't really start discovering a lot of the other territories beyond just your main WWF and WCW until I was in, like, my, you know, I would say pre-teens, you know, 12, 13. Yeah, Fast Eddie kind of fills that void that Tank left us with because that's the type of stuff that he would have said, you know, uh, things such as that because uh, basically they're old fucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 51 going on 200 going on 18. Matter of fact, I'll give you a little Easter egg, so to speak. If you remember, back in the day in the um, everywhere from Birmingham all the way up to the Tennessee market, all the way around through the southeast, Georgia, Tennessee, blah, blah. Um, there was a, you're going to know the name when I say it probably, Mike Jackson. A lot of people know him as Action Mike Jackson. Worked in WA territories. Um, he was also doing enhancement talent. Chopper! Over on uh, TBS and the uh, Saturday 605 show. He was a part of a great tag team, and the reason why I say great is because of his partner, a gentleman by the name of Tony Ledoux. Tony actually still runs a restaurant out in the western side of Birmingham, Alabama, that still has some, uh, I mean, I mean vintage, classic wrestling memorabilia from his time in the business. Keep trying to get over there, and I never get a chance to. My damn schedule. But I may Go ahead. Where's that at? Where's that at? What, the restaurant? Uh, close to yeah. the Hueytown, Mulga, Pleasant Grove area, if my memory serves me correctly. That sounds like it's worth checking out. Uh, actually, Wait, what? I'm sorry. I was The, the, the fucking SCI just was making me have a coffin fit. I had all of you. <laughs> Whose restaurant? The person I'm talking about, Tony Ledoux, used to be a mainstay around the southeastern U.S., especially in Tennessee and Alabama. Oh, yeah, that sounds like it'd be cool to check out. Um, Action Mike Jackson, I believe he wrestled Ric Flair once. I think I've heard that a time or two. I believe you might have probably heard that in five-digit times by now. <laughs> uh, okay, Pop, curtain goes bye-bye. I've known Mike ever since he was a um, substitute teacher at Catherwood Christian School in Birmingham back in the 80s. Well, at least it wasn't a Catholic school. Yeah, no no comment. <laughs> now, sometimes I get uh, I get jealous, you know, when I talk to Tank or Jeff G. Bailey about this type of stuff because, I mean, they were, they were that teenage, early 20s age in such a golden era oh, God, yes. of pro wrestling. The, the shit that they've seen just makes me so jealous talking to them. Uh, you know, sidebar... Uh, also, concerts. We'll talk about concerts a lot, and the concerts that they've gone to. Uh, it just makes me so insanely jealous, because I'm already. I live my life as an old fuck, so I wish it was just legit, and I was a good ten to fifteen years older, so I could have seen all this shit. But uh, uh, they're good to have. They're the best to have around to talk about that stuff because they've seen some of the most amazing stuff. One of my favorite road trips. My first real wrestling road trip was back around 1980-81 at the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia on Thanksgiving night when they had the one-night tournament for the NWA National Tag Team Championship. And that was the night that Bullet, uh, that Bob and Brad went over with the belts. I actually um, talk with Bob every once in a while whenever I get a chance to work with him and sometimes even just out of the blue. And same thing with uh, Brad. Uh, Brad, and, psh, I miss him so much. Um, Brad and I used to hang out, whether it be in Birmingham or in Atlanta or in Pensacola, 
and you couldn't ask for a more pure friend than Brad Armstrong. But I would always, um, I would talk to him about some of the times we'd have in Birmingham, especially. Um, I have a weird distinction as far as career notes because the show that Brad worked at Global Championship Wrestling, he and I worked together at that show, and that was his last live event before he left us. And it's funny because he and I had like a 35 minute long conversation about friends in this business. And he just, he gave me one of the highest blessings I could ever get. He said, you know, I've talked to so many people in this business. I've bumped in, I've made so many friends and lost so many friends. And it's like, you're always somebody that I can come back and talk to about nothing whatsoever. And it's still fun. And <laughs> so I take, <laughs> I, I take that one with me, but yeah, talk about Birmingham, especially uh, Southeastern championship wrestling. I'll give you a quick one on this one. Um, because we had the, like I said, it was the Fuller Golden Welch promotion long before it was continental um it's where bob really made his name the rat patrol um tonka kid johnny rich and uh scott armstrong formed a six man kind of like the Freebird rule the original midnight express Condry rose and norvell austin got most of their steam here um bill ash still one of my favorite people in this business ever that man was a learning tree par excellence I mean, I love Rip Rogers and the stuff he drops on Twitter, but having a chance to sit down and talk to Bill Ash over the years, damn. That stuff I wish I could write a book on. But we had some of the best grassroots stars come through the southeastern U.S., and this is something, like I said, I wish that somehow or another Robert Fuller would find a way to release some of those tapes because I would kill to have them. I would pay for those faster than I would pay for the WWE Network any day of the week. Yeah, they got uh, the Continental Library is one of those libraries that's in, uh, you know, kind of in limbo. Like, somebody owns it, but they've never mass-produced it. Continental, Portland. Don Owens. Memphis. Don, uh, yeah, Don Owens, Portland. Uh, Memphis, uh, West Virginia. Um, there's still some territories out there that haven't been libraries that haven't been bought now how much of that stuff is left who knows like i know there's some of it of continental at least because it's on a lot of it on youtube a lot of continental a lot of portland on youtube too well let me give you this one real quick because i everybody always asks when i am asked what my favorite match of all time that i was there live for it was on a monday night in boutwell auditorium in birmingham alabama the build-up had been there for about a month on southeastern championship wrestling and Bullet Bob Armstrong, before he was Bullet Bob Armstrong, or the Bullet, was one-on-one -on -one with Ric Flair for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Bowell Auditorium was packed standing room only. And they shouldn't have even had chairs in there because after the two-minute mark of that match, nobody was sitting. They had everybody on such an emotional roller coaster didn't matter exactly what second of the match you want to talk about. It was one of those, as I like to say, moments in time. And that one just stuck with me. It was, it prob like I said, for two gentlemen who didn't dot, 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 dive everywhere, this was one of the best pure wrestling matches I've ever seen. Yeah, that's what sucks about the old territory stuff is the TVs were awesome and you got such great promos and angles and things such as that. But so many of the great matches that happened, you know, they're not on tape. No. You know, no one will ever see them. They'll never see the light of day because back then, you know, it was about the, about, about the live show, getting people in the building and yep. then guys, that's where they would really bust their ass. And so much of that would just never be seen by any of us. Mm-mm. Yeah, it's a fact. Hopefully uh, some of that footage is unearthed eventually in a proper format. It'd be but, nice. But uh, I am uh, just all tapped out, gentlemen, uh, <laughs> since we're, 
we are at the the one hour mark, so uh, we'll go ahead and call it. I, I apologize to the fans. I uh, partied maybe a little too hard on SCI weekend in combination with uh, shaking hands with about 5,000 different people from all over the place carrying God knows what. So uh, I'm going to go chill and uh, lay down for a little bit. <laughs> So you're saying you're saying the wrestling fans, the good fans that came to the SCI, you're saying they brought diseases to our great town. That's what you're saying. <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was trying not to laugh you know, for that reason. <laughs> gentlemen, next year when you come to the SCI, you find the Reverend Dan Wilson, and you come up and you just cough right in his mouth. He cuts him out because he thinks you're filthy. Hey. He thinks you're filthy animals, and you don't deserve to see this great wrestling action. That's what he just said. Oh, actually, Andrew, I've got one that'll happen long before that because on Thursday night, August thirty first, I did find that I found out that the good Rev will be working with Dragon Con Wrestling in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> yep. That's right. So we can get him so sick all over from again. The SCI this to the con crud. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, Eddie, give us your uh, your list of a thousand plugs. You're the Dean Malenko of podcasting, and then we'll get out of here. <laughs> at Beyond at Beyond Ringside on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live, Beyond Ringside.com is home. And please don't forget the Beyond Ringside radio app is available for Android, Amazon, and Blackberry products. Short list. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's why uh, they call him Fast Eddie. It has nothing to do with his feet in the sack. <laughs> Only from the neck up. Follow Andrew. <laughs> what? Only from the neck up. <laughs> Follow Andrew on Facebook, Pro Wrestling Super Shop, and more. Follow me on Twitter at Dragon 3 Jax. Follow Anarchy Wrestling on Twitter at Anarchy Landmark. And subscribe on Powerbomb.tv. Uh, that's all we got for you this week. Hopefully, uh, be feeling better by the time we return next week. Keep one foot in the gutter and one fist in your gold. Uh, yeah, and if you got the SCI, uh, take some fucking Benadryl or something. Good night. Good night.